guys, welcome back to the JMK Garage. Before we jump in this video, just want to give a big shout out to Tommy, aka Freezing Boy on Instagram, for capturing those awesome roller shots as we rolled into this video. Secondly, a huge shout out to Roller Stripping, who recently provided me with some awesome riding gear, vest, jacket, it's armored here, as well as a rain suit for riding in the rainy days. Um, all of it from Highway 2, it's their in-house apparel line, and so far, absolutely loving this gear here. Uh, so jumping into the video, this took a lot longer to prepare than I was expecting. Uh, the last video you saw the exhaust go on there. Uh, since then, I've done some wheels, new tires, the Denojet PowerVision PV1B that's on there too. I've got to tune a little bit. Um, also started to do a little bit of wheelies. You know, just baby wheelies like 905s, 930s, most. But making some progress and having a lot of fun the riding. Also, just now tonight, I increased the rear shocks from 13 to 13 and a half inches, just to give a little more ground clearance for uh, making the turns. I've been scraping pegs real bad at 13. Hoping 13 and a half allows me to take some twisties a little bit uh, quicker and have more fun. Hopefully, also help with the wheelies. So, anyways, let's jump in the video. If you enjoy it, give it a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. In my last video on the dyna here, which is actually not aired yet, it's airing this Saturday, I talked about the new Bassani exhaust that I put on there. That's from Royal Distributing. Trailer's there because last night we took it out to the bike night in Guelph, along with the Husqvarna in the back of the truck. Whole family went, so that's the reason why I couldn't have ridden it out there. Uh, last video though, I promised that the next video would be on the installation of these wheels. And I'll try to get to those in this video, but uh, we'll see if timing works out. Reason being is I ordered the bearings and the adapters to run these wheels on this bike. These are off of a 84 um, Sportster, so sizing is a little bit different. Um, back wheel is three quarter inch, same as the Dyna there. Front is three quarter inch, and this Dyna uses a one inch front axle. So um, I've got new three quarter inch bearings, front and rear, uh, tapered Timken bearings, and I have the adapters, uh, the back, some spacers. The front, I have the three quarter inch axle to use with these forks and the proper spacer to space out the uh, brake disc rotor to fit the caliper and the spacers for the side. You see over there is the old ones. So hoping they come in time within the next few days to get uh, those installed and included in this video. Um, however, the reason for this video here is I ended up finding a sweet deal on a new DinoJet PowerVision PV1B. Uh, those are going for uh, list price is $984.99. Um, somehow the shop, somewhat local, uh, it's Ace Moto out of Milton. I uh, got that for $689 plus tax. Still uh, a lot more money than I was hoping to spend right now, but I couldn't pass up uh, you know, $200 bucks off that. And with the Bassani exhaust here, it runs better at times than with the Vance and Hines, but there's other times where it's actually choking out and wanting to stall. So, so I don't want to keep running it as is on tune. Uh, you can see the pipes have colored up nicely, but I'm a little worried that it's running way too lean and going to cause those pipes to crack or other engine damage. So get this on. Hopefully I have better luck than with the PV3. And yeah, according to the guys at DinoJet, PV1B does have the capability of tuning that ECU and this bike. So we'll uh, get that installed tonight and do some testing and hopefully flashing over the weekend, get this bike running uh, as good as it should be. All right, so there it is. And it comes with uh, mounting holes there and the bolts for the back, but obviously no mounting bracket which is uh, you know, a little disappointing. So we need to find a way of mounting that onto here someplace. And I think I'd like to uh, keep that open 
and possibly mount it up there. We'll need to fab up a little bracket to uh, mount onto the top clamp there somehow and onto there. That way I have a live display of all the uh, engine parameters and adjust the tuning on the fly. Forgot to mention though that this here is just the PV1B. It does not come with the auto tuner. Although you can get the auto tuner to pair along with this, which I believe I will need to get. Um, this bike does not have O2 sensors um, stock. These exhaust pipes fortunately do have the bungs, unlike the Vance and Hines. So at some point I will need to get the auto tune add-on to pair with this, the bike, and properly tune it. Um, the other option is to take it to a dyno tuner and use the PowerVision 1B here to tune it on the dyno. Not entirely sure which route it'll go, but uh, I think the auto tune should suffice. Um, but for now, we'll just put that on as is and use one of the available tunes to tune it um, just to get running better than it is now. Obviously it won't be perfect, but it'll be a hell of a lot better than um, how lean it is running right now. All right guys, so we got the PV1B installed on the bike there. I'm not sure if I wasted time fabricating that bracket or not. Hopefully it works. So what I did here is I just used some flat stainless and the bandsaw over there, drill press, whatnot, to make this little bracket that sandwiches on between the bar riser and the top clamp. Slight angle. Looks like that. So now that it's on there, I have the wire running to the ECU just loosely to make sure it actually works. Not gonna waste time hiding it behind the gas tank until I know for sure. So anyways, we'll get that turned on and see if it uh, accepts the tune. And we got the uh, owner's manual there on the laptop. I've done the uh, ECU firmware updates or the firmware updates on here at least. So accept and select vehicle program. And load tune and custom tunes. All right, this will marry the PV to the bike permanently and cannot be undone. Is that what you want to do? Yes. The device and bike are now married. Okay. No tunes have been loaded onto the tune manager. Please load either a dyno jet or a current original tune. Okay. Custom tune. So no tunes are on here. I'll need to load them on here with the computer here. And I'm not at that point yet where I see them on here. However, I did have to do this with the PowerVision 3. And in quick tune here is where I can adjust the rev limiter and all of that. That's kind of cool. Spark. Fuel. Won't touch that now. All right, so I'll turn that off and download the tunes. So this here is where we're downloading the tunes. We have the stock improved. We have Screaming Eagle Cleaner with Chromeworks slip-ons. Screaming Eagle Cleaner with D&D Slash Cut. Uh, there's no point in doing all these tunes. We'll just look for one that's closest to here with the intake and two-in-one exhaust.
right, so I seem to have figured it out. I was using the C3 software for the Dyno Jet PowerVision 3 instead of the uh, WinPV for the PV1B. So we're opening and sending the tunes through here to there. And once I'm done doing that for the four or five tunes I've downloaded, um, disconnect that and give it a try to make sure they are actually on there and can be flashed onto the bike. All right, so we have a handful of tunes downloaded onto here now. Um, see if they appear. Program vehicle, load tune, custom tune. And there they are. So I'm not sure which one I want. So that's the stock improved. Don't want that. Oh, exit. Next one down, select this. Screaming Eagle Air Cleaner, Vance and Hines 2 into 1 Pro Pipe. Screaming Eagle Intake, right. Air Cleaner, Thunderheader, 2 into 1. And I really don't know which one will be the best option here. And that's a Reinhardt 2 into 2, don't want that. Select. And again, that's the same thing. That's the 2401, 2401, and 2404 Thunderheader. Not sure why there's two different versions of the um, same tune. Let's go with the Thunderheader. I know it uh, wraps around like this one here. So continue. Select Flash to send this tune to the ECM. Flash. This tune is either incompatible with a connected vehicle or not supported software level. Well, that's not good. That was a Screaming Eagle intake and Vance and Hines 2 into 1 Pro Pipe. Let's try that one. Incompatible with a connected vehicle or not supported software level. Well, that's not good. Looks to be the same as my uh, PowerVision 3. It is writing. So that's good. I'm not sure why there's two copies of that same tune, but the second one worked. So that's that's awesome. I think I selected the Vance and Hines Pro Pipe, not the Thunderheader, but uh, really, again, really not sure which one will be a better fit for this bike. Um, obviously, it's not the Screaming Eagle intake. It's not that same exhaust, so either of them won't be perfect. Please turn key off and wait 10 seconds before turning key back on. That should be good. Back on. Except, so, vehicle info, status. Quick tune. Let's just see what the uh, rev limiter is set at. 6200, perfect. We might play around with that later on. Go up to 6250. Cool. Uh, idle offset. I'm not sure what that is. Play around with it. Do some more research online. Uh, fuel, low, medium, high. Global decel lug. Not sure what those mean, but do some research. Spark, timing advance. Cool. And this is lower idle. From the 1250 or whatever it was before. Auto tune, data log, gauges. There we go. It's kind of late tonight. Kids are all in bed, wife's in bed, so. Turn this off, battery's a little low, and try to take it out tomorrow for a good little cruise to make sure it uh, runs good. Do some testing to uh, see if there's any improvements here. All right guys, I can't take it up for a test drive right now, but I can start it up. Um, watching the kids right now, while we Life's out grocery shopping, so just to make sure it runs. Alright guys, after 
three long days of waiting to test out the Dynojet PowerVision PV1B here. Since I flashed it, finally got a chance here. Take the bike out for a short little ride before the sun goes down. So, we know it fires up and runs, but uh, we'll see how good it runs here in a minute. And I'm hoping that's just uh, get things settled in, but it's not running as great as it should be. better there. I've got some full throttle here. Oh good. Sure, what this guy's doing 40 in a 90 zone 4. Red light in there just stops. I'm thinking that's the setting here um, with the uh, red line settings. I think there's some adjustment there to adjust how much it fluctuates. And personally, I like it when a red line is up, 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 not just the uh, fuel cut. And maybe that's how this. Increased red line works is with fuel cut, not ignition. So let's jump in there and see about doing the Quick edit. So back program vehicle. Quick tune. So idle offset. I believe that maybe. Tune definitely fixed the uh, meaning or running lean. Not getting the same amount of D cell pops as before. A little bit, but nothing in comparison to before. Alright guys, so I just reflashed it again. Um, Screaming Eagle intake with the 
thunder header exhaust, which I believe is closer to the Bassani that I have here than the Vance and Hines tuned to one. So, quick reflash, we'll take it out for another short little ride here and just see how it runs in comparison to a few minutes ago. I'm pretty quick to say this, but it does feel a lot smoother already. It's not bucking around like it was um, leaving my house there. And again, the diesel pops are essentially gone now in comparison to how they were before. Now, with that last tune there for the Vance and Hines 2 into 1, um, the top end felt dead. It made me want to put the rev limiter back to the 5500 RPM or 5600 RPM or even something lower in comparison to the 62 because it just, uh, you can feel the power just drop off. So I'm hoping that with the flash on here now, it uh, regains some of the top end. And again, this still has a stock cam, so I'm not expecting anything big in the top end, but it'd be nice if it didn't die off like that. There, I spoke too soon, there is still some diesel pops, but again, not like before. And I wasn't expecting this to be running perfect either, with just a flash on a basic tune. Hi right, guys, so the week went by and unfortunately due to family commitments and being busy at work and that, I did not find time last week to get the mag wheels over there installed on the bike and a video edited um, and posted on YouTube here as I had planned. So uh, we'll, we'll wrap this video up here and hopefully by the end of this week have those mag wheels on. I have a PowerVision PV1B installed as you've seen, I flashed it with uh, just one of the few basic tunes on there for aftermarket intake and two-in-one exhaust. It still was running much leaner than it should have been. Better, but still leaner. So I learned how to do the quick tune to adjust the uh, fuel trims up across the board and to adjust the D-cell to eliminate the pop. It is much better now. We get some gurgles as, uh, as you should, but it's not quite perfect. And obviously it won't be without the auto-tune add-on there or tuned on a dyno by a professional. So not sure which route will go there. For now, it's running very good. Pretty happy with the bike. But before I can call it complete, at least for now, gotta get those wheels on. I was mentioning that I planned to have these on last week. Um, I got these in last week. It's from Vulcan Engineering. You got the Timken bearings, the seals. Uh, this here is for the front to space out the rotor, the three quarter inch axle to be used with my uh, 39 mil front end that uses a one inch axle currently. And spacers here for the rear to make that uh, older style wheel work on the bike. So we'll get those on and hopefully wrap this video up this week, sharing the uh, final look of the bike with the new wheels on. All right, you got the tires mounted on there. As always, wasn't easy, but they are on there holding air now. The bearing races here, if you put the uh, new bearings in there, you can feel some uh, tough spots. Even with the fingernail, you can feel where it's uh, got some hairline cracks or wear. 
that's on both sides. I tried getting those out myself, and those marks there, downside, are not for me. Looks like someone else also tried pounding them out at some point, or pounded out the previous ones. Um, I tried putting a bar through there and uh, stacking up washers to push those out, but they're not budging. So, so I think I'm going to take them to the Harley dealership and ask them to slide them out both rims and get the new ones over here um, pounded in. A little bit of a setback, but uh, still hoping to get these wheels on here in the next uh, day or two. And before I end the video, just a quick little shot of what they will look like there on the bike. I think that color goes quite nicely with the, uh, the colored stainless steel exhaust. All right, so a quick little update. I was planning to take my wheels over there to uh, Rockies, the local Harley-Davidson dealership to have the bearing races pressed out. Um, looked in line and I found this kit here, which was supposed to work, but uh, these here, which would go in and expand with this to pull the bearing race out is nowhere near large enough. So that there is the largest one in the box. That should go in there and expand to pull out the race. But as you can see, it's maybe a three quarter inch diameter and I need something that's nearly double that. So this here won't work. Not sure what it's intended for, but clearly mislabeled online. So I need to send that back and try to find the correct tool. And to pitch in here, um, I mentioned earlier that I've now become a brand ambassador for Royal Distributing. So because of that, they've sent me a large rain suit, a large Highway 2 vest, and a large Highway 2 armored flannel shirt or jacket. So we'll have some videos of that out uh, shortly as well, I hope to. So several weeks have passed since I started this video here. Um, I finally got the right tool in. The last tool wasn't for uh, these wheels down here. It uh, just wouldn't work. So anyways, I got this here. Just finished hammering out those old bearing races. We got the new ones in there. Uh, the seals aren't in yet. But uh, just for now, I've got the axle put in there. And I will need to punch out the old ones in there, both sides, get the new ones in, a um, little unsure exactly how this is supposed to work, it's the disc brake um, rotor spacer, but it does not fit on there, so I'm not sure, I mean I've Got this here for the 84 to 99 Timken bearings. Again, that's from Vulcan Engineering. These here are off of an 85 Sportster. So they should be for that. And I'm trying to convert that to one inch um, bearing or one inch front end using the three quarter inch axle. So um, yeah, I'm really not sure yet. I guess we'll wait till I get the room front wheel off of the bike and rotor off and see how that fits on there. Um, I guess worst case, I may need to machine this out, just cut that out in the lathe to slide over top of there. That's the worst case scenario, I think. That there is for the other side, which uh, they don't have dual discs, so new seals, I'll get them put on. Should have the wheels here on, possibly before the end of this weekend. Yeah. What? Yeah. Why do you never put the money in your Harley? I'm going to. Uh, today? Maybe. So just to give a little demonstration of how that works, 
bearing race is inside there and there's no way of pounding it from the back side without these so let's go in down small side in down get that space put that rod in pushes these out pound them from the back side and shoots it out same process we're putting these back into the wheels all right so we got the new timken taper bearings i'm going to punch those in they've been in the freezer overnight Nathan, what are these tires for, bud? The Harley. What are they going to be used for? Driving around. Just driving? Burnouts. Or burnouts. You should do some burnouts, Natalie? Yeah. Yeah? I like you do your burnouts. You like me doing burnouts? That'll be fun. I think burnouts are fun, too. You going to go for some burnouts? But what I need my dirt bike helmet. Yep. My bicycle helmet is not like a dirt bike helmet. A dirt bike helmet is safe. Yes. Will I come on with you doing burnouts? Maybe. All right, guys. Although it's a fairly redneck way, I'm convinced it's a also effective way of balancing wheels installed um, at home. So what I have here is a three quarter inch key axle or rod mounted to my workbench, um, a collar locked on the backside, the stock bearings installed, no grease, and another locking collar on there. There's no side to side motion or play in the wheel and no resistance. So I will give that a little spin. Let that rotate until it stops and put some weights on the top side um, to balance it out. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's going to stop with the uh, valve stem there pointing down because the weight of that is more than the amount of the rim drilled out for the valve stem to be installed. So let that spin until it stops, put some weights on, keep trying until it uh, balances out nicely and doesn't stop in any particular spot. So it actually stopped there. Last time it rotated back and forth a few times. So let's try spinning this way. As you can see, stopped there. Now it's going back down. stop there so I'm pretty convinced balance point is about right there put a and yep, put it down it comes back up there all right so we got the weight on the rear wheel there um, front wheels are on there now so I put bearings back in there um, pack them full of grease and put the seals on but uh, the only grease I have right now is in the grease guns there. So I'd like to make sure I get some good quality wheel bearing grease before I put those on. So we'll get this front wheel balanced up and then uh, bearings in, get them on the bike over there, hopefully uh, this weekend or within the next uh, few days.
there you have it. Got the mags on finally. Took a lot more work than I was uh, anticipating, but we're on there now. And short drive from home to here. Seems to run nice and smooth. No vibrations. Um, tires have nice, nice grip. Definitely better than before. But the, uh, the true test will be taking out to work tomorrow. Well guys, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this longer video and catch you next time.